Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to a production of Geektopia Island here, an uh, episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons. I am Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And here, we're just messing with the deck here. Of course, construct decks are like popping up left and right. So I was like, well, let's see what I can do. And the name of the deck is called Book of Heavy Metal! Blue Black Construct Metal Deck. I like it let's, already. Let's get to it. All yeah. right. First up is that walking ballista. Yeah, it's, it's gotta be there, bro. Why not? He's a construct. Yeah, and he's an artifact, so he gets there. Yeah, XX is his cost. Yep. Um, it's gonna give it to you <laughs> when he comes into play with X one one counters on him. Pay four, put a one one counter on him. You can remove one one counters from him to ping a creature or a player for one. Yep, dude, it's good. And when we get to him, we get to keep doing it a lot. Hopefully, we'll see. The next one, Metallic Mimic. Cost 2, 2-1. Two, he is not a construct, but he will become one. Because he chooses a creature type, construct. And anything with that creature type gets a plus one, plus one counter when they enter the battlefield. So Walking Ballista gets the extra fill and all the fun. Extra, all, everything else does too, pretty much. That's neat. Yeah. That's classic. Of course, uh, Scrap Heap, Scrounger. Also, he's a classic construct. 3-2. Uh, uh, he cannot block. But it's okay. You can pay two to exile a creature from your graveyard, and he gets back into the battlefield. And thank God for Metallic Mimic, you don't have to cast. He just enters the battlefield, so you can keep making four threes. Awesome. Yeah. All day. Next construct we got is the Chief of the Foundry, because it's a lord for, for artifact creatures. Yeah, three much. mana, two, three. Other artifact creatures get plus one, plus one. Yep. Just good. Silly stuff. It's all good. Now... I don't know if people are familiar with this next card, but this is what... I've been wanting to make a deck with this card ever since it was released <laughs> in Revolt. And I think we got it here. Uh, Scrap Trawler. Cost 3, 3-2. Three, when him or another artifact uh, you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard that has less converted mana cost. So, thankfully, Walking Ballista costs 0 constantly. So, if he stays on the field and things keep dying or whatever, then you're just like, Walking Ballista. Again. Walking Ballista. Again. Or even getting the Metallic Mimic as well. And it goes to your hands so you can cast it for a little special love that I have. Yeah, I didn't read that it says another one too. So yeah. it could be a 4-drop or a 5-drop or whatever drop construct or artifact, dude. Exactly. That's, that's silly. Yeah. He, he's pretty cute. Uh, Padim, console of the innovation, is a four drop, one four, meh, but artifacts you control have hexproof, so thank you for that, that's yeah. what I love. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control artifact with highest converted mana cost, which you probably will, or tied to, uh, you draw a card. That's pretty good. Yeah. Protects your dudes, and you draw a card. Every, uh, hopefully extra card every upkeep. All right, next up is Trashos, Scourge of the, <laughs> of the Trash Yard. <laughs> He's a four mana, seven, seven oh, trample. Yes, tell me about him. Yeah, yeah. He enters the battlefield tapped because yeah. he's bad, and he doesn't untap because he's bad. Um, whenever you cast a historic spell, untap him. Artifacts, legendaries, or sagas are historic. So, yes, he was in my other deck. It didn't really work out. It just felt weird. But this one, he untap. He untaps every turn, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I, he seems a little better in this deck, <laughs> at least, but not a lot. Because I hate this card. If anything, you can cast Walking Ballista for free, because he's a zero cost to untap him. Yay! And then with Scrap Trawler, or uh, with everything, everything helps him. You know, gets bigger for Chief or the Mimic or just I, everything helps with him. Finally, I will say, if this dude does die, he gets back anything. In anything yeah. else in the deck with a scrap trawler in play, which is kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. I'll give him that. You can get another cheap, you can get another scrap trawler, you can, you know, get something like that. Alright. And he works with Padim too, because Padim's yeah. legendary, so done. Now, this one's in here, because I just wish he was super good, and I feel like he is. Is Noxious Gearholt. 5 4 Menace comes into play, kill a dude, you gain that much life of their defense, I do believe. Dude's good. He is good, and he's just not used, because he costs 6. Yeah. But he also costs six, so he can go get <clears throat> with Scrap Trawler anything in the graveyard. Yeah, by he that gets point. any 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 artifact. Yeah, which is pretty good. All right, first spell we got. Yep, Battle at the Bridge. 
this card is amazing in this deck just because of what it can do. Yeah. So black and X, and it's got Improvise, which your artifacts can help cast this spell. Each artifact you tap while you play this adds it's one up. mana. It's up. And target creature gets minus X, minus X, you gain X life. Yeah. Sadly, it's Sorcery. But, meh. That's okay. If you're gaining so much life and you're killing a bit, dude, it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, you can always use Traxos to pay for it. Yeah, Since exactly. he's not in doing anything otherwise. Yeah. I mean, no, because he's already tapped. Uh, yeah, well, he's still terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next one. Uh, Pacifis yes. Pacification Pacification, array. there we go. Yeah. It's one mana. It's an artifact. Two, you tap it. Tap target artifact to creature. Yeah. At first, I had Fatal Push, as always. But I'm like, this is an artifact. Triggers Traxos. It can tap dudes if you want, and it helps out with later of like one of the sagas that we have. Hmm. All right, what is this? Metallic Rebuke. It costs three. It's a counter spell, but it also has improvise, so uh, you can pay uh, one less for each artifact you you tap. So it can essentially just cost one blue mana. So if you're like you have one left and you put out a big dude, then you can help still protect your dudes. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Counter target spell unless the controller pays three. So it's not straight up counter, but it still gets there. It's still pretty good. Yeah. Alright, so the next one I'm gonna let you do. Let you Okay. This, yard. this is also the second cornerstone next to Scrap Trawler. Is uh <laughs> Phyraxian Scriptures. It costs four. It's a saga that really makes this deck work. Okay. First first chapter. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. That creature becomes an artifact as well as its other type. So, Padim. If you get to the spot where Padim is on the field, then you play him. He's an artifact. Because the second part is destroy all non-artifact creatures. Done. So, Padim lives. All your dudes live. Hopefully, none of theirs does. And you swing in. Super awesome. That's pretty good. It's a Saga and it abstracts those. So, yay! And then, of course, the third one. Exile all cards from opponent's graveyards only. So that can be pretty useful against God's Pharaoh Gift and all that and stuff. That it's pretty good, yeah. I, this I think this is one of my favorite sagas. Yeah, and indefinitely in this deck, it's it's a one-sided Wrath of God practically. Yeah, that's why I have three main board, one sideboard. It's just damn good. I mean, uh, oh no, you're gonna lose a Padim if you do lose a creature. Yeah. It, oh well. If somehow, yeah, you didn't target your Padim, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, Padim gives himself hexproof. Hence. Yeah. yeah, all your dudes are untouchable by then. Alright, can you please explain this card for us? Alright, so the next one we got is the Antiquities War. It's yep. a 4 mana saga. Uh, it works just the same as the other ones. At saga. <clears throat> at chapter 1, you look at the top 5 of your library, you may reveal an artifact from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in, in a random order. It does that at 1 and 2. Yep. So that's kind of good just because you're always going to get something. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the third one is artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base power 5-5 five, five until the end of turn. Yeah. And this is why I went with the array instead of Fatal Push constantly. Because if you do it and you're like, I need a control spell. Oh, I get Fatal Push. I can't pick it. So I'm like, oh, I get this array. I can hopefully play it and tap a dude down next turn or whatever. And it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. And then it gets to go crazy. Yeah. All your little dudes become 5-5s. Five, and it's just fun from there. And it, and it does say base power, so all of the counters on them will stack onto it still. So it'll exactly. be like five or six or however and, much you And the counters. Chief of Foundry like buffs them up too, so it's yeah. like, you just have a massive army, hopefully by then. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now, the reason why of the name is Tezzeret, Master of Metal. You're like, what is this guy? Yeah. He's actually the Planeswalker Tezzeret of the Planeswalker deck. He costs six, which is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, plus one, he basically does the same thing as the Saga. You refill cards from the top of your library until you get an artifact. Uh, put that card in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. His minus three ability is the game winning one, and that's why we're using him. Uh, target opponent loses life equal to the number of artifacts you control. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I really, of course, wanted to make like a treasure deck with the, you know, the Marriott Master decks started popping up, like yeah. whatever, but no one played with this guy. And I feel like, eh, just plop him down, minus three, are you still dead? Okay, I'll swing then. Yeah, dude's pretty good, that yeah. ability's pretty hot. And his, if you get to his plus eight, <clears throat> which, actually, it's not too bad, he starts out with five, but his minus eight, I apologize, gain control of all artifacts and creatures target opponent controls. Not until in the turn, just in general. 
you just to get to have all of it. It's pretty good. Yeah. He's a pretty good guy for a Planeswalker <laughs> deck. Yeah, I like him. And I like him. Hopefully with the enough control and enough dudes that you can hopefully play him and see where it goes from there. Yeah. All right, so on to the lands real quick. Yep. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, eight of the double, so uh, Fetid Pools, Drowned Catacombs. Uh, we have four Ifnir Deadlands because you're basically hopefully tapping for colorless most of the time. And it can kill or weaken a dude if later. Adventure's fair because you need to gain life or you need to go search for an artifact. Probably tricks us. But <laughs> don't search for don't, 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 Yeah. Don't do it. And then the rest is just islands and swamps. Yeah. But eh, yeah, with that, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of like, you can go maybe full control with this with less creatures mm -hmm. and try that part. But I like creatures a lot, so I have to go with that. All right. So sideboard. Yep. We add in a uh, Hope of Giripur. Yep. It's one mana of one one flyer. Sacrifice it until the next till your next turn. Target player that was dealt damage by this can't cast non-creature spells. Yep. So this is definitely against control for sure. Slows them down and it prevents them from countering your next big spell if it hits. And if you sack them with Scrap Trawler, then you go get a Walking Ballista in the graveyard. So that's pretty good. Kind of helps out with that. Uh, the next, of course, is Negate. It probably should be main board by now because of how white blue control is doing. <laughs> but it's there in the sideboard for that reason. Next. Uh, Golden Demise. It's, uh, it's from playing for the past few weeks, there's either hard control or just tokens everywhere. Yeah. From, from around here. And so Golden Demise is a must be sideboard card. Like just minus two to all creatures. You kind of don't care if yours die because you'll get them back or they're going to be bigger than when you cast them. So it's just if they have, I don't know, 10 sapperlings or constructs out there, you just want to kill yeah. them off. I, I've seen that everywhere. There's just so many tokens. Just This card's pretty good for what it does. Three yeah. mana, minus two, minus two. Great. Just get there. Uh, next up is Unwind. It's another counter spell. Counter target non-creature spell. Untap up to three lands. Yeah. And it costs three, so it's technically free. Just against control, and I don't know. I just wanted to use it, to be honest. I want to see how it works out. All right, I yeah. can dig it. Yeah. We got one more for Xian Scriptures. Yep. Because it's just a good card. It's just good. And if you need it, you need it. Especially against mid-range. That's what that's for, the fourth one. Yeah. And then Raska's Content. Yeah, because it's it. Exile Target Creature Planeswalker Gain 2 Life. If you have them, good. If you don't have them... Hour of Glory is great. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, same cost minus one blood, <clears throat> so it's four still. Uh, instant exile target creature. Yeah, that's it. And if it's a god, you remove all the gods from the, their deck. So it's it doesn't get Planeswalker sadly, but it'll still get Hazard and all that, just in case, because that's like a fifty cent card. I think Vraska is still like around seventeen or so. Yeah, it's it's up there. Yeah, um, yeah, it's. Pretty solid. Even Golden Demise can be replaced with uh, Yohani's Expertise because it's minus three, minus three. But by turn four, they might have you down to five or six. Like, it, yeah, it's really rough. So that's why I have Golden Demise instead. So turn three, board white, done. Yeah, I like that a lot better just because it, it can be it can be one sided later on too, which yeah. is really good. Exactly. I, I don't know. Well, I think this deck is pretty good just for what it can do. Yeah, it's fun. I would like to test it out to see how it is. Yeah. But I think it can definitely be like a 3-2 deck or a 2-2 deck depending how many rounds you go. It might get you 8th place top or whatever, but maybe even more. Who knows? Because people have underestimated Phyrexian script scriptures. It's really the like main thing that will get you there for sure. Yeah. I mean, it could actually make me like Traxos, but I seriously doubt it. I mean, you'll actually get to see him do something yeah, for once. Yeah, get to be nice. untap and swing his 7-7 seven, seven face or his 8-8 eight, eight face or his 9-9 nine, nine face. Whatever. It all depends on what's on the board at the time. It's still bad. <laughs> With that, uh, as always, the deck list is down below. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. Be sure to like and comment on the video. And to get our latest and greatest, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. And to get notifications, there's also a little bell that you can hit. Now, if you want to look at some old Deck Tech videos, go ahead and click to the right. And if you want to see them in action, click the videos below. Thank you.